Hey friends, this week we're going to learn about an artist named Bisa Butler. And here she is right here. So Bisa Butler is a Brooklyn-based artist, Brooklyn, New York. That's where I live. She creates colorful portraits on quilts. That's what I have right here. Do you guys have a quilt at your house? Have you ever seen a quilt? So quilts are an important tradition within the African-American community. This artist celebrates her family's African heritage by getting most of the fabrics she uses for her quilts from her father's homeland in Ghana. Butler uses photographs as references for her portraits, which are often life size. So that means she creates portraits, which is a picture of a person, as you can see right here, she creates it on a quilt by sewing. And this says that the portraits and the quilts are often life size, meaning they're as big, they're as big as a person. The expression on the people's faces in her portraits are meant to capture the viewer's attention. This definitely captures my attention. Does it capture yours? So let's look at a few other examples of her work. So here we have right here. So can you believe that this is a quilt? See all those different patterns and colors that she uses? Can you spot an object in your house with a pattern on it? Let's look at some more examples. Wow, look at this. I love how she uses these designs, these flower designs in the background. And you see the bright colors that she uses for the skin. It's a little bit abstract, right? So remember this artist that we looked at last week? Uh, this is by Kimmy Cantrell. So his artwork is very abstract, right? So Lisa Butler, this is one of her quilts. Um, an up-close picture of one of her quilts. So her pictures are a little bit more realistic, right? But also a little bit abstract because of the colors that she uses. Um, and that's amazing because some artists like to combine abstract art and realistic art together. That's what we're looking at today. See all these amazing patterns that she uses? And so she gets this, um, these fabrics from her father's homeland in Ghana and from other countries in the African continent. So here are two wonderful examples of portraits that she did, right? I love this portrait of this girl with this dress and these flowers in her hair. You can see the background has some design. They look like leaves. This one is of a boy. Um, he's wearing this really fabulous patterned coat. And you see how his skin is all different shades of blues and greens and purples? Okay, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna create our own portraits in this style that we see Bisa Butler doing. So we're not gonna sew a quilt like this, we're just gonna use um, what we normally use, like crayons or colored pencils and paper, but we're gonna try to um, be inspired by Bisa Butler. Okay, so first thing we need to do is learn what's the difference between a warm color and a cool color, okay? So as we can see in this portrait, the face is made out of cool colors, all right? And so, Let's look and see what the difference between warm colors and cool colors are. Okay, so cool colors are colors that remind you of things that are cool or cold, like cold water, or maybe um, leaves like this, or like the snow or ice, all right? Things that are cool and cold. And warm colors are things that remind you of the warm sun, or maybe, have you ever seen a sunset, like a warm sunset, the colors in a sunset, or even a nice warm toasty fire, okay? Things like red, orange, and yellow, okay? 
So what we're going to do today is we are going to create a portrait um, from just the shoulders up. You can do a full body, body portrait if you like. See, um, you see, as you can see this portrait of this girl, see how the face and the skin are all bright colors. That's what, that's what we're going to try to do today. Okay, so get your paper and your crayons ready and the next segment of this video is going to be doing our portrait together. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do before we start our drawing is we're gonna separate our crayons or our colored pencils, whatever we're using to color with. We're gonna separate them into two groups, the warm group and the cool group. Okay, so I just grabbed this, uh, this pile of crayons here. So let's sort these together. Okay, how about this greenish teal color? It's gonna go on the cool side. How about this? Uh, blue color. Yep, on the cool side. Uh, how about this hmm, violet uh, red color? That's going to go on the warm side. Purple. Cool. Green. Cool. Yellow. Warm. Orange. Orange is like fire, so it's going to go on the warm side. Brown. Hmm. Now, I don't see brown in either one, but I'm going to say that brown probably falls in the warm side, right? Because it's kind of close to these colors. Purple. Cool. Blue. This is like a nice turquoise color. Cool. Pink. Warm. And then this, uh, this pretty mint color. That's going to go on the cool side. All right, so now that we have our colors sorted, now we're gonna get ready to begin our drawing. Okay, so we're going to create a portrait. You can do a portrait of a girl or a portrait of a boy. Or if this just seems all too overwhelming, you could also just draw a shape like this big heart that I have here, okay? And do the same technique that I'm gonna talk to you about in just a moment, but just using a shape. Okay, so it's a regular portrait. It can be a portrait of yourself, uh, so it would be called a self-portrait, or it could be of someone you love, a family member, or it could just be someone from your imagination. Bisa Butler works from photographs um, to create her quilt portraits. So if you actually have a photograph of someone you'd like to use, um, that works too. Okay, so if you can notice something slightly unusual about these portraits, it would probably be the fact that you can see that the skin tone is made up out of blues and purples and greens, right? So that makes it a little bit abstract, right? Just like when we were looking at Kimi Cantrell's um, artwork last week. Okay, so that's what we're gonna try to do. We are going to use cool colors for the skin and then warm colors for the clothing or for the hat or for the background. Okay, because notice this, if you mix all the different colors together, it kind of looks weird, right? It, it makes more sense and it looks better when you stick to one family of colors. Um, they just blend together nicely, right? And that's something that artists do. So if you really want to actually flip them and you want to make the skin color um, all warm colors instead, like these ones, you could do that too. But I like the way these purples and greens and blues blend together and Bisa Butler uses that um, that uh, color technique a lot um, herself and if you want to look back on the Google Slides you can see lots of examples of how she does this. Okay, so we're going to start with our paper. I'm going to do an example of the girl this time but you'll see a picture of the boy drawing um, on the Google Slides if you want to take a look at that one. Okay, so we're going to start by doing a pretty big oval in the center for her head. I'm going to leave a little bit of space at the top because I want to put those big flowers. All right, now we're going to do the neck and then the shoulders. I'm going to give her dress a square 
neckline like that. Okay, now I'm going to draw her ears. The ears are kind of in the center of the head. All right, the eyes are right around here. They're kind of like football shapes. You can draw your nose like a little boop going up or a little boop going down. I'm gonna draw mine like this today. You can draw the mouth smiling so you can see the teeth like this or like this. I usually start by doing a curved line to show that she's happy. Then a little C shape like this for the bottom. And then like an M shape at the top. All right, then we're gonna do the irises inside the eyes here. The eyelid. I'm gonna give her some eyelashes. Eyebrows. Okay, and now I'm going to add her hair and those pretty flowers. So it depends who you're drawing. How does their hair look? Do they have braids? Do they have buns? This girl's gonna have hair that comes down like this, and it's gonna be curly at the bottom. But you can draw yours however you want, like always. Okay, now, Add those flowers. What kind of flowers do you want to draw? I'm making all my flowers kind of slightly different shapes here, kind of overlapping. All right, so now that we have the outline, now we're going to fill in uh, the face um, and the clothing and stuff like that with um, colors. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my cool colors that I sorted over here. And I'm gonna start with, I think I'm gonna start with purple. Okay, now there's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, I'm gonna start along the edge. You see how I'm going back and forth in the same direction? I'm not just going like this, like all scribble scrabbly. I'm going back and forth in the same direction and it makes the color look nice and smooth. Um, and we're going to do the same thing for her neck. See, I'm going back and forth, back and forth. The harder I press with my crayon, the darker the purple looks. Okay. So now I'm going to choose another color. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to overlap the colors. I'm not just gonna like put it next to it like this. I'm going to color over. So the colors blend and overlap.
See how I'm going over it? And those colors blend. You can do a lot with crayons and colored pencils. Now, if you're using markers, you can do this, but they're not really going to blend. Here's an example of what happens if you're using markers. Do you see how the colors, they just kind of stop red, pink, orange. They don't really blend that well. But if that's what you got, just give it a try. All right, see how I'm going to blend it over that purple that I just used. If you want to practice this technique, just drawing, um, just coloring in a simple shape first, you could try that too. Okay, so now what color do I want to add over here to finish it off? I think I'm going to choose maybe this green color. You know, I really like this teal color. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to blend. The colors over each other. Now this is something people do with paint, but it works pretty well just using regular old crayons. Blend, blend, blend. Okay, and now, uh, now we can choose um, a color for the lips. Uh, I think I'm going to use this purple color again, and I'm going to press kind of hard down on the paper so the color looks nice and vivid and rich. We'll try to do it without breaking it. Okay, that looks nice, and I'm going to do the same thing with the eyes. So press hard so the color is nice and rich. Okay, nice. So now that we've used the cool colors for her face and for her neck, now we're going to switch over to the warm colors for the other stuff. Okay, so what color do we want to make her dress? Um, how about this pretty uh, violet uh, magenta color? Now, if you're coloring right off the edge like this, a good technique is to put another piece of paper underneath so you can go right off the edge and you don't have to worry about coloring onto your coffee table or whatever your dinner table or whatever you're using okay and I think I'm going to use maybe this pink for this area Okay, and now I think I'm going to use the same color up here a little bit. I'm going to mix all those warm colors. Together, I'm going to color right on top of this one so they blend. You could even add some leaves or a crown or a tiara, whatever you like. Okay. And you know, I think I want to use a little bit of this brown, maybe in her hair. That's up to you. You could put purple in the hair, any color you like. All right, so now it's just the last part. You're going to want to add some design or pattern in the background. That really makes our artwork 
look really nice and finished. Okay, so you could go in and you can make little tiny patterns like this, or I used some little star designs like this. Okay, and that would be like this. You draw an X, then another line, and another line. You could use stars. or maybe spirals. It's nice to fill up the whole page when you make a picture. All right, does that look done? I feel like that looks pretty good. All right, guys, um, I can't wait to see what you create. Um, good luck.